You should water your foundation. You have probably heard that phrase a hundred times. If you do not know exactly how to water your foundation, this video is for you. This video will show you step by step how to assemble, build, and use an automatic foundation watering system. An automatic foundation watering system may mitigate the damage done to your home due to expansive soil movement during our hot, dry summers. Watering systems can be overused, but if you will follow our instructions, there is very little likelihood that this system will damage your home. The red on this map shows areas of Texas that have highly expansive soils. Note that the entire area around Houston is inside the red zone. If you do not keep the supporting soil moist, here is what happens to the expansive soils that support your foundation. The open cracks in the soil surface shown here mean that, means that the soil is unstable and cannot properly support your foundation. Here you see where the soil next to the foundation has pulled away from the edge of the slab. If the soil stays dry long enough, the soil will fracture and pull away from the foundation underneath the slab. This photograph was made after a saw was used to cut through a slab to expose both the slab and the soil underneath the slab. As you can see, the soil is extremely fractured, it's crumbling, literally falling apart. In, in this kind of condition, it can no longer provide proper support for the foundation. This is what we want to use a watering system to avoid. Many homeowners believe that a lawn sprinkler system will protect their foundation. It's certainly better than nothing, but it is not as effective as the foundation watering system you are about to see. These are all the different parts you will need. Each of them, each of them is discussed in the following slides. This is a hose bib backflow device. There's a good chance you have one of these on your hose bibs now. If not, they cost around $10 each at any hardware store and they are very easy to install. They just screw onto the hose bib like a hose. This is a four-way hose connector. You may also use a two or three-way connector. Any hardware store will carry these. Buy a metal, not a plastic one. Now we come to the timer. This one costs around $40 at any hardware store. You will also need a pressure reducer such as is shown here. Again, any hardware store will carry these. This is a four-way hose connector. It is made of brass and will cost around $10. This is a pressure reducer. It is an important part of the watering system. It makes your soaker hoses last longer and work more effectively. You need one that will drop the water supply pressure to around 25 pounds per square inch. Before you assemble the components, locate your hose bib or bibs. Most houses will have two hose bibs. A hose bib is just an outside faucet to which you can connect a hose such as shown here. Here we see a hose bib with the hose removed. We now take the four-way hose connector and attach it to the hose bib. Now take the hose bib timer from the package and install a battery per the directions of the manufacturer. Most hose bib timers will take a 9 volt alkaline battery. The next step is to attach the hose bib timer to the hose connector. It will screw on just like a hose. Note that at the other end of the hose bib timer, there is a male connection. The, press, the connection is used to connect the pressure reducer. Here you see a picture of the timer connected to a hose bib and the pressure reducer connected to the timer. What makes the system automatic is the hose bib timer. This unit sells for around $33. It is easy to, ch to program and easy to change the program. It is important that the unit can accommodate at least four different programs. Now take the soaker hose out of the package. 
When you take the soaker hose out of the packaging, look at each end and note the small plastic washer with a hole in it inside the hose bib. This is a water restrainer. You need to remove each of these from each soaker hose. If you fail to do this, water will not flow to all of your soaker hoses when they are connected together. This is a restrainer that has been removed. Be sure to replace each strainer with a hose washer available at any hardware store so that where the hoses are connected they will not leak. You are now ready to connect the first soaker hose to the pressure reducer on the timer. Connect as many soaker hoses together as you need for your design. This is how the whole assembly should look. There is a hose bib backflow device attached to the hose bib. A two, three, or four way connector is attached to the backflow device. Then the timer is connected is attached to the connector. A pressure reducer comes next and then the hose is connected to the reducer. We are now ready to lay the soaker hose around the foundation. The hose should be placed 12 to 18 inches from the foundation. One mistake that is both common and dangerous is to lay the soaker hose, hose right next to the foundation. Never ever do this. This photo shows an example of what you do not want to do. Never place the soaker hose close to the foundation as shown here. One problem you may run into concerns concrete walks, patios, and driveways. We call this concrete flat work. This issue can be worked around in a couple of ways. If you have more than one hose bib, you can use two watering systems, one for each side of the flat work. Another approach is to use a special piece of hardware as shown to create a tunnel under the flat work. Once you make a tunnel, you can insert a piece of PVC under the flat work and then attach a hose connection to each end. This way, you can attach soaker hoses to each end of the PVC. The ground under the flat work will not be watered, but the flat work concrete protects the ground underneath from being excessively dry or wet in any case. To see how this might work, consider the following typical layout. In this example, assume there is a rear hose bib located at the aqua arrow and a front hose bib at the orange arrow. Here the aqua line shows the layout of the soaker hose connected to the rear hose bib. The orange line shows the layout of the soaker hose attached to the front hose bib. Note that due to the location of the front and rear hose bibs, there is no need to make a tunnel underneath the concrete walk. In this design, we have to make a tunnel shown in yellow underneath the front concrete walk. The hose bib timers need to be programmed, so what program do we want to use? In January, February, March, and April, supplemental watering is not needed, so just disconnect the water from the hose bib timer at the hose connector. In May and June, you should water the foundation three times per day for 10 minutes each time. During July, August, and the first half of September, you should water the foundation four times a day for 15 minutes each time. For the second half of September and all of October, you should water the foundation three times each day for 10 minutes each time. In November and December, no supplemental watering is needed. So once again, you can simply turn the system off and disconnect the soaker hose from the hose bib timer. It is important that you check to see how the system is working at least once a week. To do this, First get a screwdriver with a long blade. Take the screwdriver and see how far you can easily push it into the ground. If the program is working, it should go into the soil the full length of the blade without too much effort. If it will not do so, the ground is too dry. If it goes in easily but is sloppy wet when you pull it out, the soil is too wet. Adjust the program until you get the right results. If you have any comments regarding this video, 
please email me at graYSPE at gmail.com. That's graySPE at gmail.com.